Hi, welcome to the bathtub. It's the old master bay. This is Scott Bradfield. It's the old master bay. Be this parakeet, Dodo. We just put her back in the cage. This is really completely new. She's been very quiet. This is the first time she's jumped on her head in ages. So we're 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 not. Uh, I'm gonna put her back in the cage. She's she's been kind of uh, mopey, kind of because she was going through her uh, brooding stages, and then she was laying eggs, and you know she's just been kind of pooing on everything now. Dada, can you can you kind of calm down a bit? No, are we gonna be? Able, am I gonna be able to do anything with you? Okay, I may have to put you back. Okay, this is the second second time in a row I've had to do this. Come on, are you? Gonna, I'm gonna give you one more chance. Come on, come on. If you wanna get out of my shoulder, come on, come on. Oh my gosh. If this if this, this was an important show, if we had anything important to say, that Dota would be a would be a distraction, but she's not a distraction because it's not that important. We're just talking about books we love, we love to read. This is our our third or fourth to, uh, brief talk about Robert Sheckley, the great Robert Sheckley. This is one of the two volumes we're talking about this week, The People Trap, one of his sixty short story collections. You cannot do you cannot do wrong if you buy a collection of Robert Sheckley short stories. You just simply can't do wrong. And we've done various different episodes, different ways of talking about Sheckley. I think we we did a, um, who's the guy that wrote Hitchhikers? Do Douglas Adams. We did a Douglas Adams, no, Robert Sheckley, yes, just to kind of compare and contrast. And this time we're going to do kind of the opposite. We're going to do, if you like Kurt Vonnegut, many of my readers, many of our my bathing buddies out there, like me, have spent a good part of their life, and especially their youth, reading Kurt Vonnegut. He was one of the first guys who wrote kind of serious literary books that were fun to read. We kept going, this is serious, but it's fun to read. And that's that's exactly what Sheckley is like. Kurt Vonnegut's very similar generation and sensibility and comes out of a similar publishing world. I mean, he published in a lot of the magazines that Sheckley published in. And their comic, satiric visions of the future are very, very similar. Cat's Cradle. Anyway, if you like Kurt Vonnegut and you've run out of Kurt Vonnegut novels to read, then you should definitely give old Robert Sheckley a try. I read two of these. I've been reading a lot lately, and I've kind of felt they've all fallen around. I read this several, several weeks ago, uh, a novel. I've read almost everything. I'm sure I read of Shuckley's when I was a kid. I'm pretty sure I read this one. It's called Journey Beyond Tomorrow. They're all about 150 pages. They're very shortish. This is a very uh, – and then I read this uh, really great collection of short stories, The People Trap. I'm going to say just a few words about both of them. This this is uh, like many Sheckley novels. Sheckley didn't write a lot of novels. His novels tend to be very episodic. They sometimes feel like a bunch of short stories that are kind of tied to some thin thread, and they sometimes veer off in kind of weird directions. They're not as good as the short stories, but I would say the first half of this is kind of a brilliant satire on America in the fifties. It's it's kind of just brilliant, and it's it's about a guy who comes from somewhere out in the. He comes from the Pacific, some some Pacific islands, and he goes to he goes to America. And he travels through it. He encounters all sorts of crazy things that's going on in America, which is just the crazy America that Sheckley lived in the fifties and we live in now. And in the course of it, he meets all sorts of different people, and it's kind of told, kind of like a Pilgrim's Progress. So he's going through America and meeting all these people, and and he goes. He goes into he work he goes and works in a truck driver and he goes in, he gets put in a mental institution and he eventually gets hired by the government and he gets hired by the military and all the kind of absurdities of American uh, industrial and, and government life kind of come into this book. Um, it, it, it's 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 the first third of it particularly has some really lovely kind of you know, sat, sat, satires that kind of almost remind you a little bit of uh, Candide or something where you're going, going through all these crazy characters of, of the culture at the time. And I really, I enjoyed it, but I got, as I often do in a, in a Sheckley novel, the last third or so kind of got a little bit lost. Now this, I can just almost un enthusiastically suggest anyone picks up any of these old, beautiful, look at that beautiful old book. Dell published several of his collections. He must have published hundreds of short stories. He published in everywhere from Playboy and, you know, oh, what, what were some of the famous places he published in uh, science fiction stories like Galaxy was a big place for him. But he also published in a lot of the slick magazines. His stories were just so clever, so well done. 
the first story, The People Trap, is it's it's basically almost every the entire contemporary world of, of adventure or science fiction seems to be influenced by by Shackley. It, what's that game? The Hunger Games. The People Trap is like the Hunger Games, only it's ten times better. It's only twenty pages. The short story. It's about a future which is in which uh, America, uh, the world has become so overcrowded that people fight to the death. Basically, they have to run a race through New York, and and the winner of the race wins like an acre of property with privacy. That's the only part because everyone else is living in like five people in a in a in a, in a studio apartment or ten people in a studio apartment. It's it's a very strange story in the sense that it goes through one crazy idea after another, and yet Sheckley never loses you, never loses you. There's lots of stories in here that are kind of minor Sheckley stories, but there's never a bad Sheckley story. There's several stories that take place. There's a guy's, a couple of guys, goes to five. There's four or five stories from a group called the Triple A Ace Planet Decontamination Service. It's these two guys that go off on kind of wacky adventures. One is to, to deal with a haunted planet. That's the closing story. And a couple of others that are better. One is they find a, they find a device. They buy a device, a, a swap meet or something that, that basically can produce infinite amounts of material. You don't have to put anything in it. It produces lots of stuff. But the lots of stuff it produces, you can't do anything with. It's a very funny story. The funniest story and the most... Dodo, I don't want to put you in your cage because you're being good. You stay down there. <sighs> um, the funniest story, in it, and I have to say, I still I keep thinking about it because it's kind of so perfectly done. What's the? Me, what is the one? The victim from space. I think it's the victim from space. I remember the setup of the story. Is the guys? Tra There's lots of people just travel around the universe exploring civilized planets, and he goes to a, a, a planet. Where the culture, the, the people who live there, this kind of tribal culture, they celebrate painful death. They think painful death is the greatest thing that can happen to you. And if you live a really good life, you will die horribly, <laughs> a horrible suffering death. And the higher up you get in a hierarchy, like the more you become a tribal leader or you do good things for the tribe, the more you're going to be tormented. And the, and the tribe tries to really, tor really reward you with a horrible death. And this guy comes down, I forget his name, and he, he shows up, he says, I'm going to try to help your culture. And he, he's trying to make contact with his alien race. And all through the story, he's doing more and more to save these people. And every time we cut back to the, to the tribe at home, they're like going through these, they're torturing the hell out of these people who just did something good. And they're saying, God, he's, this alien guy's doing really well. We have to come up with something really special for him. There's always a kind of a brilliant series of scenes. And there's always a kind of twist, the, the old twist in the tale at the end, which makes sense. It's not a ridiculous twist, but it always makes sense at the end. There's a lot of, there's several, there's several novels and at least a dozen or more short story collections. You can't go wrong with Robert Sheckley as a short story writer. I, think, I honestly think he was actually a better writer in some ways than Vonnegut in terms of the, the number of really funny, clever, sharp stories. There's about half of these stories that are just kind of commercial stories that he kind of whipped off, and you know they don't they don't have that kind of resonance that 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 a couple of the stories, particularly the title story and the one about the the the, the culture that tortures people to death, which is a very, really a funny story. Every time I think about it, some of the stories are just brilliant, and they go down to the worst that the worst stories he write are kind of interesting and kind of technically smart. All the way through, so we, we're going to keep pushing for old Robert Sheckley. Uh, he he he's been he, he only died a few years ago, and he's writing good stories all the way up through his eighties. And this is a kind of cool one. It's it's definitely for the completest. I am a completist of Sheckley. I want to reread all of his work uh, eventually. Okay, stay safe. I'm I'm going to stop really quick because I have to sneeze. Bye.